Yesterday, my BYD at 03, well, it arrived in my driveway. It wasn't delivered there. I went and picked it up. I have a video coming very soon. I, some things about the car, I loved. It drives surprisingly well. You know, I thought the handling dynamics of the car wouldn't be that good. The media in Australia, that's what they've said. The handling is not that great. The suspension soft. Frankly, I drove it and I was quite shocked. The handling is way better than my BMW, which is meant to have top of the range, amazing handling. Well, sorry, but the Addo 3's handling, the driving of the car itself was excellent. But there was some things about it that drove me a bit mental. Anyway. Those will be in my review, which is coming very soon. But within two days of me picking up the car, the prices changed pretty drastically. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. And as you know, it is my mission to get everyone into an electric car. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you believe, what you think. An electric car will, at some point, whether that time be now or soon in the future, be better for you. Be better for the world. Be better for you. Be better for your pocket. Be better for just everything everyone so it is my mission to get as many BYDs, as many teslas as many electric cars into people's into people's driveways as is possible as quickly as possible now i firmly believe that within what 10 years pretty much the only vehicles on the market will be electric the key reason for that is simply because people don't like old stuff and gasoline vehicles they are old they're stinky they're just ancient honestly if you drive an ev with no transmission which pretty much all of them don't have a transmission and then you go back and drive even an eight speed modern gasoline car, you realize just how jerky having a transmission is. Something you don't even need. Why pay for stuff you don't need? The best part is no part. As Elon Musk says, EVs are simply better. Now, BYD sell the Addo 3 here in Australia. They sell it uh, in India, where they now manufacture them in India. They sell them in Cambodia, Thailand, Brazil, a uh, bunch of South Korea, a bunch of places in Europe, a bunch of places in Central America. They don't sell them in the US or Canada. They're about the only places and Africa that BYD don't currently sell their electric cars. They don't sell a lot in those countries outside of China. There's still a lot, not a lot of, um, not a lot of big numbers, but they do plan on it. BYD's plan on selling more than three and a half million electric cars next year. Now, can they do that? Absolutely. Based on their current trajectory, it's extremely likely that will actually happen. But they are making it harder. BYD are raising the prices of their cars in China for the beginning of next year. And they've just kind of secretly done the same thing here in Australia. The Addo 3, I just jumped on the website and I thought, oh, I'm just gonna have a look at the car I bought and have a look at some of the features and specs that it has. Some of them I think are great, some of them were annoying. <laughs> That's a different story. And then I went, hang on a minute, the price has just gone up by $3,000 for both models. So if you wanna buy a BYD Addo 3 now, well, you have to pay $3,000 more. One way you could mitigate that is by not choosing the color that I chose, right? I chose to get the gray model. And to be honest, when I saw the white model, it's not really white. It's more like a pearly gray color. And I think it's probably the best color. You don't have to pay any, any extra to get that color. Go with that option. You're going to save yourself about $800. I think that's probably the best looking option that there is. Now the BYD is on sale in many countries around the world in two variants. It's got a standard range variant. It's got a long range variant. The long range variant on average is around $3,000 US dollars more expensive than the standard range variant. But it's definitely worth paying that extra few thousand dollars for the much bigger battery pack. It's going to get you probably in the real world close to 100 kilometers more range big difference now should you buy one of these over say well over say an mg zs ev or well there's not a lot of other cars in this price segment i mean for example the price now of the long range version in australia is fifty one thousand australian dollars that's about thirty four thousand us dollars the price of the standard range variant is forty eight thousand australian dollars that's about thirty about thirty one to thirty two thousand US dollars. So there's not a lot of cars in this segment. It's not a big car. It is an SUV technically, but it's a front wheel drive vehicle. It's not an all wheel drive vehicle, of course. It doesn't have a motor in the back, just the motor in the front, but that does help to keep the weight down a bit. And it's got a lithium ion phosphate battery pack. It's got a blade battery pack. I think that's a really good decision to make for anyone to get a lithium ion phosphate battery pack if they can. Standard range Tesla vehicles have those LFP battery packs. They will last at least double, around, approximately a bit more than double, I would say, compared to a lithium ternary, ba ternary battery pack. We we know that from basically real world testing between lithium ternary packs or nickel-based battery packs 
versus iron based battery packs. That's one of the big advantages of this car. Of course, that does mean the energy density is less. I mean, this is a significantly smaller car than the Tesla Model Y, but it has the same size battery pack. And yet the Tesla Model Y gets a tiny bit more range. We're talking the standard model here. So you can see here that the there is a bit of a difference in terms of the efficiency of a BYD electric vehicle versus a Tesla. I mean, for example, the long range version of the 803 is 1,750 kilos. The standard Tesla Model Y, the standard range model with the same LFP battery pack, around about the same battery pack size, is 1,900 kilos. It's about 150 kilos heavier. Much, much bigger car though. Signif it's like two sizes bigger. 150 kilos is not a big penalty for that much bigger car. But if you think about it, they both got the same size battery pack, but the Tesla Model Y is a much bigger car and yet it's getting the same range. How is that happening? You have to ask yourself that question. They're both rated with the same exact range. Tesla's efficiency clearly is still a little bit ahead, a fair bit ahead, I would say, of BYD. Now I've bought one, but I'm not biased. There's a lot of biased BYD fans out there. I'm sorry, there are, I've got to call it out. There's a lot of Tesla buyers who are biased, Tesla YouTube channels who are biased. The problem, I'm sure there's gonna be BYD YouTube channels that'll be biased. Anytime you just back one brand, you know not going to be objective it's really that simple so people who critique me you gotta remember i've just bought the car but i'm not going to allow sunk cost bias to affect what i tell you i'm gonna have to tell you the truth but when i review this car i'm not going to review it to try and get the best resale value for when it comes time for me to sell the car i'm going to review it to give you the truth and the right information now i'm seeing a fair few reviews and i'm like uh you know what i've just driven it i don't reckon what you're saying is true so you'll find out the facts from me soon now byd's just started delivering electric cars in india because it's making them in india that's pretty damn cool. That's a huge market. I mean, we're looking at more than 1.3, I think about 1.4 billion people living in India now, and not a lot of electric cars being manufactured over there. Plus, BYD are about to build two, two electric car vehicle manufacturing plants in Europe. Plus, they just finished, well, almost basically finished, the first part of their enormous, basically, gigafactory in China. They have about seven different factories this, I believe, is the seventh car production site. It's going to be huge. They've just finished one section. They plan on building another section. But that vehicle, that production facility, we have to produce 300,000 electric cars per year, which is crazy. Last month in November, BYD produced 113,915 fully electric cars for a total of around 230,000 vehicles produced in that month. The rest of them were plug-in hybrids. Still, though, 114,000 electric vehicles produced in the month of November. Fully electric vehicles is incredible. And BYD are not stopping there. They're ramping up at an incredible speed. Now, please, Australian distributor, don't raise the prices too much. We need as many people in these vehicles as is possible. And keep this in mind. I think Tesla might cut the prices of the Model Y a little bit. And then the Model Y might be the more compelling car for a lot of people to choose. So, you know, think about that. Keep those prices down. Let's get as many people into electric cars here in Australia, in New Zealand. The BYD is going so well in New Zealand, in every other country around the world. I'm excited to see it. Let me know what are your thoughts. Would you consider buying a BYD EV? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, my friends, have a great day.